your machine. The structure of the machine is due to the protein parts. The proteins are all these linear chains made out of amino acids. That the final structure is due to the sequence of the amino acids and the charge. That's this critical part. When I balance the charge, the protein is stable. If I change the charge, the protein changes its shape. It's simple, but it's very basic science, okay? And here's the point about it is this, is that, uh, and this is interesting because this is a, uh, right out of the science uh, journal, and this is backbone here, this protein in green, is the same one that's in yellow. And in this case, this is a protein that causes muscle contraction in your body. And it depends on this signal. The signal is calcium. When calcium shows up, it plugs into the hole. It changes the charge and it causes the protein to change its shape from this inactive form, conformation one, shape one. When I add the signal, it goes to shape two, the active form. If I take the signal away, then the protein goes back to the resting state. So there are two different shapes to the protein, an active and an inactive form, and the activity is now controlled by the signal. So basically it says that proteins provide for your physical structure, but proteins also provide for your behavior. Your behavior is the movement, the actions that you express in your life. And the movement comes from the movement of protein. So basically it says your behavior represents the action of a protein that interacts with a signal. And so that the signal activates the protein to move and the movement generates behavior. Well, why this is important then, it says this, if I have just the protein and no signal, what happens? Nothing. So then action is really by what? Controlling the signal. So here's the point. The brain of the cell is the structure that controls the signals to tell the cell what to do in response to the environment. So we want to understand the brain of the cell uh, because there's a very limited time. And uh, over the weekend when I have 12 hours or so to talk about it, I can expand on it. But in a very brief moment, the brain of the cell is the skin of the cell, the membrane. It's the same as your skin. And you might say to yourself, well, what do you mean, the skin and the brain, that they look like two different things? And the answer is this. In embryology, there are germ layers. There are three germ layers that create the ultimate full-size organism. The germ layers are called ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. They're layers of cells. Each layer gives rise to different organs and tissues. Interesting, the outer layer called the ectoderm only gives rise to two things in the human body, skin, and the brain and nervous system. Your brain is derived from your skin. And it makes sense as to why, because I'll show you, the skin is the interface between the environment and the cytoplasm. The skin can read what's going on and then tell the proteins in the cell what to do. I told you I could take the nucleus out of the cell and didn't change the behavior. And the reason why is the nucleus is not the brain of the cell. The nucleus is the gonad of the cell. It's reproduction. If I need a part, to make the cell work, then the nucleus is like the butterick pattern. It's got all the patterns to make 70,000 different parts in your body, but the nucleus doesn't know which one need is needed at which time. The nucleus has no intelligence. The nucleus is just the repository for the pattern. So if I take the nucleus out of the cell, I didn't change anything about the cell. The cell will die after a while for the following reason the proteins that make up the machinery break down and wear out. And if they break down, I gotta replace them, otherwise I die. So I need the nucleus not for the intelligence, I only need the nucleus for the blueprint. So there's no brain involved with genes. Genes are not capable of that. How does the cell membrane work? It takes an environmental signal, and it could be anything. It could be sunshine, it could be hot air, it could be sound, it could be anything that's out there, chemicals, smells, tastes, anything that's from the environment, the membrane picks that up and the, the and primary signal. And then what happens then is this, the membrane converts the environmental signal into the signal that controls the protein so that the behavior is mediated by the cell membrane as it responds to the environment. The behavior, if I cut off the environment, the cell has no behavior. Your cell with all the components in it, if I could cut off the environment from the cell, it will just sit there. It has no life. Life is due to how the cell responds to the environment. Your life is how you respond to your environment. As you see the environment, as you walk out of here, those are environmental signals. They 
actually run your proteins and make you behave. So your behavior is not due to the genes. We didn't even bring DNA in yet. Your behavior is due to how you see the signal, which is called perception, and then convert that signal into selecting the right proteins for your responses, okay? So now the issue is, how does this membrane work? Well, that's the beautiful part. It's relatively simple. Let me explain it. If we look at some cells growing on a Petri dish, and we look at the skin of the cells, it's all bubbly looking, but at a higher magnification, this is what it looks like. At higher magnification, the skin is like a sandwich. It looks like a bread and butter sandwich, and there's this lipid layer right in the middle, and it's the oil that makes the skin a barrier because the water in the environment can't go through the membrane, and the water inside the cell can't go through the membrane. So in, under the skin, there's an environment of which all the mechanisms can work. To show you the reality of it, this is an electron microscope picture of the actual cell membrane. You see the dark light, dark layer of the cell membrane? It really represents the layer of these molecules that look like this, okay? Dark, light, dark, so that the model and the image of the real picture are very much exactly the same thing. But this membrane isn't functional because I left out the most important part of the membrane. It's the proteins, the proteins that we were talking about that are capable of responding to the signal and, and then activating a behavior. So when I look at the surface of the cell, Actually, instead of being smooth, there are all these structures like antennas sticking up all over the surface and proteins built into the membrane. And that these proteins read the environment and convert that environmental signal into a behavior. Let me explain how it works. Here's the membrane. Here are two different proteins. I'm going to tell you right now, there are thousands and thousands of proteins in the cell membrane, but I can divide them into two groups. Two groups. One group has antennas on it. And antennas are receivers, just like your television antenna uh, for on top of your house when you, before cable, when you had an antenna on the top. What was its function? To pick up a signal. And then what happened to that signal? It was transmitted down the wire to the television, and the television converted the signal into something you could see. Well, here's the point. Many of the receptors in the cell are, have, have these antennas sticking up from the cell. So if I go back, these are the antennas sticking up from the surface of the cell right here. And what they're tuned to are not television stations, they're tuned to environmental information. It might be glucose, for example, is there sugar out there? Or histamine, is there histamine out there which tells me to get ready for an emergency response? Or is there something like insulin which tells me to change my metabolic pathway? For every different thing the cell can see, it has a different antenna. So that means the cells are covered over the surface with antennas for everything the cell can deal with. So the signals come in and picked up by the antenna, but then they're converted into the behavior by the second class of proteins. There are three different kinds, channels, which are just like olives with a hole in the middle of them where information can go in, enzymes, which are proteins that cause metabolism to occur, or cytoskeletal proteins, proteins that change the shape of the cell. So if a signal comes in, let's signal comes in, uh, and this is a receiver for that, and it couples to the skeleton, it says, it's toxic signal, turn around and start running. Then this is the input and this is the output. So the proteins work in combination. Receptors receive signals. Do you have receptors? Yeah. What are the obvious ones? Eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch. Where are all your receptors located? in the skin. So you and the cell are parallels, but it doesn't look like an eye and it doesn't look like a nose, but its function is exactly the same. It's the equivalent of an eye. If this was tuned to light, a photon of light would hit this antenna and that cell would respond like an eye and say, I see the light. And once it sees the light, it has to convert that information and it uses it by connecting to this. And I'm going to show you how that happens. So the input, the antenna, connects to the output which makes the behavior. Let me explain how it works. So we'll use this model right here of a, um, of a uh, receptor. Uh, let's see. This receptor is going to, uh, uh, I'm going to show it to you in dynamic motion. Here's my membrane, bread and butter sandwich. Here's my antenna. And this is the antenna scouring the environment for a signal. Look at the shape because the protein goes into the cell. Look at the shape. What happens when a cell, when a protein binds to a signal? Changes shape. 
Well, watch what happens. See, when the signal came in, and watch what happens when the signal goes away. Did you, should, I, should I do that one more time so you can see that? Okay, basically it says this, is that the proteins are in the cell, that these receptors are migrating through the surface of the, of the cell. This, okay, here it is. Are you going to come start moving soon? Okay, <laughs> here's the protein. It's scanning the environment, looking for signals. And let's say it's an insulin receptor. If there's insulin, I would activate the receptor. But look, no activation of the receptor. There's no change in shape. But when the insulin shows up, I change the shape. That, so if I'm inside the cell, if we were inside the cell and these proteins were hanging down from the, from the ceiling, would you be able to tell if insulin was here or not by the shape of the protein? Yeah. yeah. So if you're inside the cell, you can tell what's going on outside. Okay. Now the next thing is this. 